So guys, I started with a single vat which I added a skin modifier to give it some faces and then I shredded it out to get this kind of egg shape and then smoothened it and then sculpted the head to get that kind of chunk inside his head and it was looking great. So I smoothened it out and then went over to the face to kind of um, add it with a few brush and then filled the face there and then kind of added the chunk and I used mostly the grab the and the insert brush because they actually give me what I need very, very fast than some of other brush. I use the other brush, I use the draw tool, the two of the draw tool, the draw brush, I mean, the two of them, I use them because they kind of give me what I need also. Then I added the UV sphere for the eyes and make sure that the round part is pointing towards me because that is the one I'm going to use for adding the colors for the eye. So I mirrored it and made sure it was lapping. So adding the eyes actually kind of needed me to uh, bring up the eye lid. So it's gonna fit in well. It was fitting well, and then it went over to the mouth. I sculpted the mouth from the body, but that wasn't perfect because you will see later why it wasn't okay. So I used um, in another vat and then added the skin modifier. I shredded it out to get the hand. It was perfect. I duplicated it again and used it for the fingers. It was looking like it was wearing a, a glove. So using a different shape would, well, was perfect. So I use the, the the same vat and then one of the vats i used it to screw the forehand it was adding having forehand so i used one vat and extruded it to um get the hand and then i had to sculpt it to look perfect so i duplicated the hand and then with still the mirror modifier on and then adjusted to fit for the leg the leg wasn't that um it was seamless it didn't take much of my time so i had to get a new vat again add the skin modifier and then um, add a mirror to create the leg the leg was kind of bulky I had to do some adjustments before I head over to the leg. So I adjusted the body and then uh, did some minor adjustments on the body and then the hand. So I, I used the crease brush to, to kind of get this inset on the hand. It was looking like it was wearing a glove. So to get that feel, I used a crease, crease brush too. I actually used the grab brush to, to grab the hands and make him look uh, as if his hand is facing inward instead of going outside to look more realistic like a cartoon not that realistic of a human being so i added some little bones to make his hand not that smooth so i went over to the leg to flatten it and i used a few um brush to fill in some of the places here you, you see it looks that uh, uh detached so i actually feel it to look better but that didn't give me much of the result i was looking for but it was it was okay so i actually cleaned it up and made sure it's smooth so i actually brought um a new a mesh that was a UV sphere to create that of the boots. So I mirrored it and then, but the mirror wasn't perfect because I later deleted half of it and did every single thing on one of the shoes before I mirrored it like after I was done with the whole model. So I sculpted the, um, this time the mirror was still on. So I sculpted the legs and then smoothing the places I needed to smooth in. And then with the sculpt tool and the grab and the insets, these are most of the tools I use. So I inserted this one and then use the grab tool to um, grab out here and then the few brush to okay I, I, was, I was supposed to be adding brush there too because there are brushes okay so i actually grab this with a grab brush and then smoothing some of the places to add this kind of what is the buckle that was on the shoe so the shoe right now is still not looking perfect like it should so i have to add some edges and then add some kind of um curves to the shoe Make it look perfect so i actually sculpted i sculpted this which i did i wasn't supposed to do that was one of the problems i had when i was modeling sculpting the shoe because it took my time so i had to uh smooth the uh, sculpting and then use the face again with the shrink wrap and then wrap it on the shoe using the shoe as um the reference so i wrapped it over to the shoe and then smoothing it with the subdivision surface okay i used the material so i could also sculpt it and then adjusted and then copied it, duplicated it, and then mirrored it after duplicating so it could lap on the other shoe. Now you will see why I told you I actually worked on one of the shoe after everything and then duplicated it to the other side because working at the same time, I think the geometry wasn't that much symmetrized. So the symmetry wasn't perfect. So even at mirroring, I will still be seeing some of the legs out. So I had to finish everything on one of the shoes. So this is the buckle. I actually did some modeling on the um, buckle for the shoe and then I first of all used the array for this buckle. I used the array to, to array and then a three um, step array to give the array for the buckle but it wasn't perfect so I had to add them one after the other. So now working on the shoe night, okay I've gotten what I needed. I had to balance the 
um, killer being to make him look like he's standing proper. So now I use the plane and then shrink wrap again to wrap it on the body and then extruded over to the edit mode, extruded the edges to get the clothes. So I was very much careful here because I had to get the opening where his hand was coming out and it was curved, so it wasn't uh, sharp. It wasn't aged, so it was curved. So I had to be uh, very careful there on the faces. Some of them were kind of uh, overlapping to creating end guns. So make sure I adjusted it perfectly well and then and I later got a good result. So after the adjusting and then I extruded downwards and then adjusted here now to create the curve. So it was looking okay now. It was kind of looking okay. I extruded this out and it was me. I mirrored this. So adding a, a, a plane here, you have to mirror it to save a lot of your time. So I mirrored it to make sure it was straight here. So they were all at the normal to each other. So I lapped it. I have the clipping for the mirror on. So it got there and it clipped at the back. So I did minor adjustments to the clothes. And then I added the solidify modifier to solidify the clothes and give it some thickness. And then smoothing it again. Okay, I think I used the multi rest to smooth it this time, the multi resolution modifier, so I could sculpt it. Okay, that was kind of a chunk on his clothes here you go, where he added, I don't know, it was a kind of a buckle. So I had to sculpt here to make it look okay and lapping when I will add the chunk. So I had to create this lining between his clothes to make it look parted as the clothes. So kind of sculpted there and then smoothing it made it look perfect. So I actually adjusted the clothes to make it look as if it's, it's not that lapping on his clothes. So I, I used the plane modifier, um, the plane and then used the shrink wrap modifier to at least, uh, wrap it on the clothes here to actually go around the clothes because he was having a bed so on the clothes so to create that black belt this is a shrink wrap modifier and then wrap it through the clothes and then i actually had to adjust because the whole geometry wasn't they wasn't regular it was irregular so i had to adjust some parts to look the same height okay so it was actually okay now i did much of the job so i had to from the same belt i extruded it was wearing a, a cross belt which was black so I had to extrude that one also from that um, um, uh, down bed. So I had to extrude the cross bed. So I did the one for the front first because it was wearing a, the cross bed went to the back. But I did the one for the cross bed. I did the tick, uh, solidify modifier to thicken the mesh. So it was looking okay now. And then I added a multi-ray so I could sculpt some places. And then with the grab tool, I grabbed some places and then um smoothing it and there's a place that wasn't lap you know when you add when you mirror some stuff on this uh when you mirror most of the stuff will not overlap at the clipping joint so it didn't overlap so i made sure it will lap so i had to use the a cube to create this chunk um kind of a buckle on this edge on the side there on that clothes so did um some geometry adjustment on that one added the subdivision surface to smoothen it you know when, most times even after applying the uh, transform you've done on the shape if you add the subdivision modifier it's, it's not gonna give it that kind of um uh, age you are looking for most of the times the edges will be very much curved so the edges were curved too much so i had to adjust to make to get it so it was looking okay now and it was perfect so i had to add this line by the side of the clothes because he had the line looks more like um a clothes that was uh joined together from the two parts i don't know what the kind of clothes the cartoon had this so I, he had the buckle by the side you could see it so that was the idea that the coat was joined by the side and also joined from the front so added the chunk there by the side that was the buckle okay so finished it i mirrored it so it was over to the other side as i was walking there so now i had, I had to add the gun bag so I used the plan. It didn't take much of my time because I was real fast on this one. The same shrink wrap and then solidify. It was okay and perfect. So now and the mouth, I told you guys, it wasn't perfect because I, I shredded it from the body. So it had, it had, it had some irregularity, irregularity. Sorry, guys. So I had to uh, smoothen it and then get a new mesh shrink wrap on the body and then with once you are shrink wrapping you have to make sure you enable um the snapping on so it's going to snap to the body so the snapping was on he snapped to the body and then i smoothened and then was able to work on it perfectly well to smooth it and get the shape i was looking for so with the grab tool i grabbed some places and smoothing it so that was perfect and then the gun was what i enjoyed most because it was modeling so i was very good at modeling 
so it was seamless didn't take much of my time and then for the gun i used more of the inset than the um control out oh, that's the loop cut because if you're using loop cut most times you have to cut all the whole shape and then you're gonna have a lot of geometry which you didn't plan for and most times if you want to adjust them you get end guns or then you deform the geometry too much so i actually was inserting each of the faces so the geometry was quite intact the whole geometry so just the side side faces i was adjusting to get the shapes i was getting and also merging um vertices also to get shape so it didn't take much of my time then this was in place the trigger was gonna um be put in place so i actually extruded it in and um the up and then extruded it that was z and uh y axis also so the trigger I added a new mesh for the trigger, but the same in the same edit mode. So this was a new mesh, but it was the same edit mode. So did some adjustment, resized to fit in. So this was okay. So then the body was actually um, in need of much geometry because I was going to add different colors. So for you to add colors in whatever um, mesh you're working on, once you are uh, shading it, you have you need more faces. There is any color, any um, side you want to add color, you need a face there. So I actually had to create some faces that I'm going to use for the color because it was kind of a pattern. So it was, it has to be the same exact as the pattern. So after that, it was, I was cool with what I got. Then I added the multi res modifier so I could sculpt some places and give it some edges. Okay, it was great. So very, 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 I enjoyed working on the gun so i actually worked one i didn't mirror it so i just duplicated the other one and then mirrored one of it that is mirroring to the x not double mirroring so that was great i was done with that and then would have to shade it used a uh, um, chocolate color for the body and then the roughness was that was not that low roughness was high but then i added um a subsurface scattering i increased the subsurface scattering and then anti scoping was the name of that to make it look um more reflective and then the specular also to make it um more uh interactive with light so that was great and then most of the colors shading didn't take much of my time because some of the colors i used them on other side other parts of the body so i used some of the colors on other parts of the body so this was this was me texting some of the colors looking how it was um giving me the output with the light so most times once you have your light on you see what it looks like so this was great my model was perfect everything was looking great so shading didn't take much of the time so the shoe reduced the uh, specular for the shoe because it's a leather it's not going to interact with light that much so that was it i added some lightning setup i used the one point light didn't have that much time for light setup so this is the model thanks for watching don't forget to hit the bell button and the subscribe button as I drop awesome 3D content here on my channel. See you guys.